marry is more important than when you marry. I have read several reports about this man uh, and uh, Osinachi. Some of them including that he once asked, um, you know, his, cho uh, his children to um, tie her up and he flogged her with a cane. So many reports. The allegations are doing my head in. So I will say it again for the mothers at the back who did not hear me very well. Turn your radio up so that you can hear what I'm saying. Draw your ear and repeat after me. Who you marry is more important than when you marry. So if you have a child who is taking her time, leave her alone. Stop with the pressure. Because the pressure makes a lot of people, men and women alike, ignore the signs. Because sometimes the signs are there even before you marry. Because you're pressuring them, oh, I want to so actually be with my friends. I want to be mother of today. I want to dance with the bride and the groom and the guinea and the that. They get into situations where we begin to type on the internet, rest in peace. I quite liked a woman who called in earlier on, on on the station today and she said, I would prefer to trend while I'm alive as someone who left an abusive marriage than to trend as a dead person and I won't even see all the things that people are writing about me because I'm dead and all they can write is rest in peace and why didn't she leave? So as a mother, if you have allowed yourself to believe that who you marry is more important than when you marry, also allow yourself to believe that you are a sucker for when your child, who is in an abusive marriage, decides to leave. It's not easy to leave. I have a, I have a few friends who I have tried and tried and tried to get them away from their abusive husbands. And I will tell you for free, it is not easy for them to leave. They're thinking about so many things. They're balancing so many things. But those of them who make up their mind and leave, you have to train yourself as a mother to ignore all the idiots who will say all kinds of idiotic things and be a sucker for your child. You cannot say, oh no, once you have left your father's house, you have left your father's house. Uh-uh. That child continues to be your child until the day she dies. So if her husband's house is not good enough anymore, bring her home. When she comes home to you, keep her in your house. Now your picking be that. Otherwise, if you send her back there and she goes back there and she dies, do not cry on her funeral day because you're a hypocrite and a wicked parent. You did not keep her in your home when she returned to you. If you're a pastor or you're a counselor and a woman comes to you and says to you, my husband is beating me and you tell her, oh, pray. And she prays the first time. You tell her again, pray. She prays the second time. Ngwano, tell her to go home now. Give her money now. Get a house for her somewhere. You can afford it now, pastor. You can afford it. Get her a small room somewhere. Give her small money if she's not working. Save her life. Now, of course, this is working on the assumption that she doesn't die after the first beating or the second. So if by God's grace, she makes it through the first and the second, when she comes to you in the third time, when she calls you in the middle of her, the night that her husband is killing her, pastor, if you can drive down to her house, drive down to her house, pick her up, take her somewhere, you can afford it. The offering that is collected for the ministry is supposed to nourish the ministry. Part of nourishing the ministry is providing succor for members of your flock that suffer. Don't tell her to stay there and carry her cross. Don't tell her to stay there and suffer because you have suffered and died in the Lord. No, uh-uh-uh. Jesus came and said our suffering is done. As a Christian, your suffering is over because Christ has carried that burden. 
And Christ cared more about the human being than he cared about the institution. Go and read your Bible for yourself. He cared more about you than he cared about the institution. It doesn't matter what the institution is, the church, marriage. He cared more about you. And I will tell you that Christ's plan for you is to not suffer and die. <laughs> That's not Christ's plan for you. Like I said, we'll talk about this all week. But I just needed to get that off my chest. Again, to the mothers who are listening to me, who you marry is more important than when you marry. If you're a father and you're one of those that bothers your kids about, oh, you're, you're single, you're single. Again, follow the mothers and repeat after me. Who you marry. That's right. Exactly. It's in all our hands. It's in all our hands. And enough of that, oh, let's settle it in the family. If a man is abusive, report him to the police. Assault is a crime. If you're a police officer and they report assault to your police station, do something other than saying it's a family affair. Allow them to settle it in the family. It is not a family affair. It's assault. It could lead to manslaughter. It could lead to murder. You are preventing a crime, an even bigger crime. Do your job as a police officer. If you're a family elder, in the olden days, if a man beat his wife, Omoada will gather and beat up that man. They will sit on him. So if you're a family elder, your job is not to say, oh, you know, just try and do something better. Women are carrying so much. Oh my God, women are carrying so much. All the religious leaders are doing event after event, telling women how to be better wives. How many events are you doing for men, teaching them how to be better husbands? How many events are you doing for men, teaching them how to be better men? Always you're teaching women, be better this, be better that. Every time you're leaving the men to just get away with all kinds of nonsense. The women have to be the bigger ones. The women have to be the humble ones. The women have to be the uh, caretakers. They have to be the nourishers. The men just have to exist. I had to get that rant off my chest. <laughs> 